Hello everyone, it's Matt here and welcome to an update on the warehouse. Obviously you probably weren't expecting one quite so quickly, um, but I've made quite a significant progress. I've added the corner and the start of an end wall um, and then I've changed quite a lot of other stuff as well to actually match the height of freight cars as well to make sure it actually um, looks okay and actually interacts okay with what it's supposed to be doing. So. Uh, let's go over some of the updates right now, starting uh, with the end here. Throughout these pictures you will see two height measuring assemblies. Each of these is comprised of three bricks and two plates in height. And this is actually to match the height of the box cars. And that will actually t correspond with the height of the floor inside the warehouse as well. So the, the ender's wall here, it's actually the same as the size in terms of length. Um, and I have copied the spacing uh, for the openings, but the door itself uh, is possibly going to be changed in the future. I have seen pictures of where the door is actually flush with the wall of the warehouse, and I've seen warehouses where the door is actually inset to match the windows. So it could go either way, but I'm tempted to, when I finalise the model, or finalise the warehouse, I should say, is to push that door further back in um, to keep it all together. Um, architecturally. The sides you can see here actually show off the difference quite well um, between the original uh, height of the windows uh, when I was just doing this as a test build and the revised height which actually matches the floor of the warehouse and that difference is roughly six plates or two bricks um, in terms of height so there's a reasonable height difference there. The internal corners uh, so where you have the external buttress sort of pillars um, are different on the corners than they are to the regular ones in the middle of the model and the corner ones actually have a 3x3 three three space inside them rather than just a 2x2. Two two. Now there's a good reason for this is that if I left it just as a 2x2 two two, there'd only be one stud available to actually build anything out of uh, which isn't really ideal. Um, so that's why I've extended the corners to a 3x3 three, three three stud uh, hollow inside uh, format. Um, now I have seen pictures of this where the warehouses are the same and where they're different so you know it's just a case of I'll pick the different one because it actually makes it a lot easier to actually uh, do the model and do it that way and it also means there's more attachment points as well for internal structure support. Since the original batch of photos were taken I've actually changed the size round to the correct form uh, where there's two central doorways sliding doors uh, to load and unload goods from the waiting uh, cars. So the difference being is that these doors are using three of the 4x6 window panes uh, in the respective colours, so it could be black or could be reddish brown. Um, and the walls that are still left are big enough to cope with two of these uh, window panes uh, in the inside and then one on the outside. Uh, so the central ones actually have four panes and the outer ones just have one each or two. Um, and the reason for that is that I want to, the, if the boxcars are being coupled together and are in the centre, having the doors like that keeps them uh, the furthest away and it also means that there's still a reasonable amount between them, uh, between the door assemblies uh, for storage of cargo and that sort of stuff. And lastly, I'm just going to show you some pictures of the door of the current warehouse in its current form and also of the three litre really useful box uh, which I've been sewing these one by two dark red plates in and as you can see there's not many left. So I'm going to actually leave it there uh, for this video and uh, see you in an update in the next couple of months uh, when I've got some more progress. So uh, see you later.